Holy crap. Just like van life, except I'm sitting in my driveway. I mean, I can't even put up plywood. It's just raining me out. And I really need to get outside and uh, grab my uh, countersink bit. Hey. Alrighty, welcome party people. Another rainy weekend. So today I'm going to start uh, trying to sheath or skin this wall. So I have the old uh, cardboard templates that came with the van. I'm going to try to trace that curve up there. So I'm going to try to get a big piece sheet of 4x8 plywood in that section there. And uh, then make smaller ones for the bottom that way. The uh, seams will be less noticeable. Uh, see if I can make the bends happen. Um, so let's get to it. Alright, so I've already traced out uh, part of the curve there. And I traced out this section here for the cables to uh, to kind of overflow over and I'll build a uh, build a, um, a cubby around that so um, so yeah so the trick I'm going to use to help me hold the sheet plywood up is I'm going to fasten a couple of these drywall screw screws just below the four foot section and then I should be able to sit the whole sheet uh, rest it on the edge of those screws and uh, be able to deal with it uh, with a single person here. It's not too bad since this is very uh, thin birch plywood, but uh, it just makes everything more manageable as you're trying to figure out where the screws go and where to mark your uh, the lines uh, where your uh, cross supports and your your beams are. So let's get to it. All right, it's stopped raining for a little bit, so I'm just kind of test fitting this four by eight section. Obviously, I'm gonna have to cut. I want the uh, plywood to meet on the uh, on the stud there, so I'll probably cut. I need to mark and cut. Just like about five or six inches off the end there, but uh, that's not a, not going to be a problem. I'm just kind of test fitting it now, and you can see that uh, I just had the sheet rock. I meant the uh, plywood sitting on top of some screws down at the bottom, and I have one screw that's screwed in at the top right corner at the moment so usually i use local tie right tie wraps as little shims on top of the screw if i want to raise the plywood up a little bit so i've got this pretty much 15 inches and a 16th from the bottom all the way along this sheet of plywood so it's about as square as you could possibly probably get it in this van so now i'm just going to mark the where the where my screw holes would be for the studs and try to mark where the opening where my cables would come out down at the bottom and just kind of generally mark it up so I feel confident that when I put it back up, I'll know where to screw at. I'll know where all my cables are at. I won't screw in anything I'm not supposed to be screwing into. Successfully fitted uh, the first sheet of plywood. And so now I'm just going to mark, take some dimensions of uh, the rear here and fit a sheet of plywood here in the rear. So we've got a straight shot don't have to worry about the fender wells or anything right now because that's just going to be one long strip down at the bottom or not a long strip but uh you know two pieces of uh smaller stuff you won't see the seam at the bottom on any of this because all of this is going to be covered by cabinets and you know uh space drawers and all those things that are needed to hold batteries refrigerators um storage yeah, all of those things so the bottom scene you probably won't even see once everything's in here so that's why i'm starting at the top like that all right let's get to uh measuring this section and uh, cutting it okay finished fitting the uh second piece of plywood so uh for the top the uh, driver's side is finished out so what i want to try to do now is and I'll probably call it a day after I do this, but uh, I want to try to get a piece cut for the passenger side there at the top because it does two things. I want to try to get a piece cut for the passenger side at the top because it does a couple things for me. It helps me figure out how the cable routing should be and whether I need to, uh, to buy some more material. <clears throat> All right, before I, uh, before I cut the piece out, I had to put... Uh, some of this uh, cable protector 
and then I put some on the, the uh, strand coming from the ceiling there the one from the back and then both of the walls so you know obviously I still have to cut holes out for receptacles and all those good things um, but uh, until I get the bed up I really don't know how high up I want them so I want to kind of stage everything first and uh, then figure out where to cut and then see if I can fish it through so all right let's finally get to uh, cutting this piece okay got the uh, the main sheet fit on the side so now it's time to start looking at over the wheel well there and so I have these templates that uh, are actually just cardboard uh, sides that actually came with the van so I'm gonna try to use that and just cut some height off of it to uh, to cut out this piece here so let's get to it all right got the uh, bottom piece fit on the passenger side and I think I still have some wood left over so I think we'll start to work on the driver's side now so um, so I think I can use a similar template <laughs> update we got the wheel wheel section on the passenger side and the wheel wheel section on the driver's side complete so now I just need to take care of this little section down here so I'm gonna take some measurements real quick and uh, get to it alrighty we have the lower driver's side enclosed now so uh, I don't have a bunch of screws in this wall because like I said I've got to take it off again and find cut out for some receptacle receptacles and pull the cables through so until I can fit the bed I'm not going to put a bunch of screws in there because I'm just going to have to take it right back off so that'll be it for skinning the walls of the van all right party people so today I started to put the bed frame back on the walls and I actually started to mount the 110 outlet down here and 12 volts on both sides but uh, it is uh, currently the wind is whipping pretty strong and I think this uh, string of storms that uh, is coming in from the south is uh, about to let go on us well the rain never came so I went back out and I made some of these plates for the 12 volt outlets that way I can just unscrew the plate and I can get to the outlet to wire it up or change it out so it won't be such a pain I definitely wouldn't want it uh, installed directly into the, uh, the plywood that would make it a pain to change or change wires or whatever so just so you can see what we're working with here these are uh, the marine uh, 12 volt outlets and so basically I made a hole big enough in the side of the uh, the plywood for this whole piece to fit through but the hole that's in the, uh, the little small panel piece of wood there um, sits in between this this nut in here so it acts like a panel on the boat it looks so ominous out here I think we're in for some really super bad weather but uh, nonetheless so completed the uh, rear 12 volt the 120 on both their driver and passenger side and then also above the bed the 12 volts um, I offset these because actually there are going to be a set of switches that go in so it'll be a, um, a dual switch where you can uh, either cut the uh, you can turn the lights on in the bedroom zone or the kitchen zone from either the door down there so when I'm outside and I'll just reach my hand around or when I'm laying in bed I'll be able to uh, turn the uh, the front lights on as well or or off so you can be able to control them from uh, from two places so pretty much a three-way switch I have uh, another switch panel and uh, to do over by the uh, by the entrance and uh, let's get to it 
All right, so put a little switch plate down there and uh, not sure what size the switch is. I looked on the uh, manufacturer's site and they put some dimensions up there, but I don't know. I don't really trust it. So I'm waiting for my uh, marine switches to come in. So there'll be uh, probably two uh, switches there and then two switches here and there'll be three-way, both of them will be three-way switches so you can do either the bedroom zone or the kitchen zone on off no matter if you're in the bed or if you uh, are just walking inside the door here. All right, so I just played around with just putting the factory uh, edging back on and I think it'll work. Um, I just left this kind of tucked under for now. Probably definitely will have to put some type of edging around here to keep the water from getting up under the plywood, but uh, for now I'll do that and uh, we'll come back to that later on. So same thing with the uh, side step. I just uh, modified the, uh, the black plastic piece a bit and I put some two-sided tape down on that corner and that corner and uh, we'll see if it holds. All right. That'll do it for this video. We have skinned the walls successfully, put a couple of outlets in. I haven't wired them up yet. That'll be in an upcoming video. Give me a big thumbs up if you like the content. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, please take the time out to go hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel. Also, click the post notification bell. Comment down below if you're building your own van. Let me know what I'm doing wrong here. You know what to do. Skill up and ride. Van up and go.